the police found a candidate for Olaf Palmer's murderer, they went to the northern suburbs, an impoverished area of Stockholm, where the candidate that presented itself was Krista Pettersson, a drunkard, and down and out. It occupied an enormous energy in the investigation, and even though he was released on appeal, the Pettersson trail is still the go-to trail, and most people in Sweden believe he did it. But did they choose the northern suburbs because a killer from Östermalm, the posh area, was just too awful to contemplate? It's a story of two Stockholms. Solna is obviously the suburb that time forgot. It's full of disability pensioners and cheap food stalls, flea market type shops. A far cry from the posh areas of Östermalm. You could well imagine Krista Pettersson sitting here in the 1980s. Pettersson was arrested in 1989. After a closely watched trial, he was jailed for life, but released on appeal after six months. They couldn't find a clear motive, nor any technical evidence to bind him to the murder. Östermalm is the Kensington and Chelsea of Sweden. Palm had mortal enemies here, among retired colonels and captains of industry concerned about his high taxes, his socialist rhetoric, his various schemes to tax the rich, and his approaches to the Soviet Union. Behind the facade of liberal progressive Sweden, a picture Palmer was instrumental in creating, there's a quite a conservative side to Sweden. This lot were appalled that Palmer had left the upper class behind. Palmer himself was born in Östermalm, here in the building that now houses the Romanian embassy. His father and grandfather were among the most prosperous members of the business oligarchy of Stockholm at the beginning of the last century, and they'd married into the nobility. They hated Russia with a passion, and fought in Finland's civil war against the Russian-backed workers' red guards in 1918. Palmer himself was a cavalry officer after graduating from school, and was quite conservative in his youth. He then became very left-wing and entered the Social Democrat Party. He was responsible for backing the feminist movement and introducing an atmosphere of egalitarianism to Swedish society, including generous benefits and taxes. He flirted with controversial third world leaders. Many were the dinner party conversations in the polite salons of Östermalm, where the desirability of Palmer's disappearance from politics was discussed. Palmer's last big foreign affairs move came in the early 1980s when he approached the Soviet Union in a spirit of peace that went against the hostility shown towards the Soviet Union by Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan. Many Swedes don't like Russia at all. as a historic enemy, and the History Museum in Estaman has shown a series of wars the Swedes have fought with the Russians, the Swedes often being the instigators. King Charles XII, here in his, one of his soldiers' uniforms, was only the most ambitious crusader to wish to occupy Russia. Previous invasions had often had a religious aspect. When the Germans named their SS division, recruiting in Scandinavia, SS Viking, they knew how to play on ancient warrior dreams to smite the eastern barbarians, going back to Scandinavia's conquest of the Volga rivers and their peoples in the 9th and 10th centuries. The word Russia, incidentally, comes from the Rus people, a coastal region in Sweden, and their inhabitants. And Siberia itself has its roots from the ancient word for Swedes, sphere in Russian. There was considerable frustration in the Swedish military that Palmer had not been able to put a stop to the submarine intrusions that dogged Sweden in the early 1980s. They were believed to be Russian. Was Palmer assassinated by the military or organisations associated with the military with connections into Swedish business and conservative classes? There were definitely plans to carry out a coup of sorts in some places outside Stockholm in the spring of 1986. Swedish witnesses speak of having been approached by men inside the security services, either Western or Swedish ones, with an offer to kill Palmer if they were paid millions of dollars for it. Here are the names. Kenneth Nailberg, U1. Three former SAS men mentioned by the British journalist Duncan Campbell. 
One winter's day, I walked around the murder scene with someone called Ivan Biershan, a Yugoslav former mercenary turned doorman. Sweden has always been obsessed with Russia. The founder of Stockholm, Birger Jarl, whose statue is here and whose fake sarcophagus is outside Stockholm City Hall, created the city, literally Fortress Island, or Stockade Island, as a jump-off point for crusades against Russia. If you've just come from St. Petersburg or Tallinn, you see the architectural family resemblances in the feel of the city immediately. Sweden has been more autocratic than it itself admits. Fifteen years ago, an official independent panel of experts looking into the police investigation of the murder found that the traitor trail had never been investigated despite enormous efforts in other areas. Even after that news, the police continued looking at evidence that would allow for a retrial of Krista Pettersson, which is possible under Swedish law. Clearly it was much safer to find a guy from the wrong side of the tracks, from the northern suburbs. Krista Pettersson died in 2004 of drink. So now the murder will never be solved. Perhaps it was all for the best, since the wounds would open up if the truth were told.